Let's get some spooky music here happening. And get everyone a moment to jump in. There we go. Welcome, welcome everyone. Hope you are excited to create a little bit tonight. Get everyone admitted in here. Get your supplies. Did you get your goodies? Let me turn this down. Whoa, not up, down a little bit. There we go. Hopefully you guys are Harry Potter fans, huh? Oh, hold on. Let me get them all admitted in. Sonia, are you here? I'm going to give you, so you can help admit everybody in, so we can get started. Susan, I'm loving this hat. Say it again. I'm loving your hat, your little orange What's that? witch hat. That fits. <laughs> I didn't know it was a costume party. I know. I was just feeling the vibe, y'all. I figured, you know what? The best way to get, like, the creative juices flowing is to embrace your environment, right? Um. Okay. So still putting people in. Uh, Sonia, are you able to get those people in and admit them in? Thanks, Gwen. I um, think so. Did you add me as a co-host? I thought it was admitting ability make co-host there we go okay so everyone should be gathering their supplies you need hopefully two file folders letter size on those i'm trying to get my phone set up so give me two minutes and then you'll need your Five sheets of paper. If you're doing the one that I'm making, then of course those ones from Hobby Lobby. And then either orange glitter paper and black glitter paper, or orange paper and cardstock and black cardstock. Does anyone have any questions on the supplies in general? Let me know. Okay. Susan, can you add an extra folder to just have more? You could. You okay. could. So once I kind of share with you the technique, you absolutely, yeah, you could do it as many as you want. I thought. And what if you don't have that border set? You can use any tiny border that you like. Okay. Yeah, it'll work with any tiny border. Or if you want to adjust a different type of border, that could work too, and we can go over that when we get to that step. All right. Okay. Have you guys eaten too much uh, Halloween candy by now? <laughs> I bought a bag for trick or treating and my kids are like, mom, if you open that, it'll be gone. Cause I'm always the one who opens it every year. And sure enough, I opened it and it's gone. So we have to go buy another bag of trick or treat candy, but it is the season, right? Okay. So let me find that in. You see my phones, uh, Sonia? No, ma'am. Oh, wait, it says iPhone or does it say yeah. Susan's phone or what? Oh, you're talking about your screen? Yeah. You see it? No, ma'am, I see you. Right. I'm saying in general, I gotta spotlight it. There we go. Okay, spotlight for everyone. We got my, my table. 
Okay. Yes. As a reminder, real quick to everyone in here, um, we love for you to participate and talk with us. But if you aren't asking a question, please mute your mic so that we can still see Susan's uh, creating desk. So if you haven't yet, go ahead and mute until you're ready to ask a question or anything like that. Okay, it should be spotlighted for everyone, right? Is the down view spotlighted for everyone? Mm -hmm. Perfect, okay. All right, so to get started, we're gonna first start with making our album. And so just a reminder of how it kind of works is it flips through. We're going to create these little cute decorative edges, uh, which the um, haunted accessory is perfect for that. So we'll be using haunted accessory. I'm going to be using cheerful tiny border, but you can use any tiny border that you'd like. And I'm also pulled in the bat a la carte because it was super cute over on this page right here. You can see it kind of trimmed out of this corner, just a little decorative edge. So a very simple one, but it, there is a few steps to it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to take our manila file folders here. And if you have two of them, and preferably one that's at the bottom, so see how this tab is at the bottom, and then if the other one's at the top or the middle, it's fine. But if you have a few to pick from, um, that having that tab at the bottom is going to allow us to have this back this back page tab here. So see that? Okay, let me move these papers out of the way. We don't need our papers yet. We're just going to build up on that. Now we're gonna need our paper trimmer. So go ahead and pull out your paper trimmer. And let's start with the one that has the tab at the bottom. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and trim that up to about five and a half inches. So you're going to go to five and a half on your trimmer. Again, this is the side with the tab at the bottom. So five and a half inches. And then we're just gonna cut that down to five and a half. Keep the length of the letter um, size as it is. And then we're gonna take the second piece. This is about six and a quarter. So we wanna trim this one down to five and a half inches as well. Okay, so just go ahead and put those in a pile and then you'll take your other one. We're gonna do the same thing, five and a half inches. Put it down, take your other one. And on this one, um, we won't be using the tabs in this specific dot sign. So it's fine, we're gonna trim that off. So that should leave you with basically four foldovers that are five and a half inches um, in height, and then the length is staying the same. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and trim our edges before we go into the details of each of these edges. Um, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna grab your first paper. For those of you that are designing this exact one, pull out the orange plaid. Well, it's orange, black, and white plaid. Okay, so if you're designing the exact one and you went and picked up this exact paper, that's what I have at the top. Um, if you are using your paper stash, then basically just grab your first sheet of paper. For the sake of adding variety, I am going to throw in some other paper, but we'll have this sample in front of us the whole time for anyone that's creating this specific design. So we're gonna take our first sheet of paper and we're gonna cut these down to five and a half by nine and a half. Okay, so I recommend just cutting them all down so that when we trim out those edges, and I'll show you guys that here in a minute, um, we'll do it all at once. Okay, so, uh, so it's nine and a half. Even though this first page, we're gonna trim that a little bit more. I still just recommend, I think it's easier to get all of our scrap papers out at once. So again, just going through that, since our longest one in the back is a little over nine and a half, is why I'm having us just cut five and a half by nine and a half sheets of papers. So however you guys go about doing that, 
this one has trick or treat on it, which is why I went to nine and a half first, because I want to make sure those words are right. And then five and a half. Okay. Now with the sheets, of course, we're going to do two of those on your first pattern. So go ahead and trim the second one to five and a half as well. So we have our first pattern paper. We have two sheets that are five and a half by nine and a half. Okay, go to your second sheet, which for those of you that might be doing this one would be either the chevrons or the polka dots. So again, there's we should have five different sheets that we're gonna be utilizing and all of those we wanna trim it down to five and a half by nine and a half. Five and a half. We'll turn up our music a little bit while we're doing that. So everyone can kind of keep up. If I go too fast, you let me know. And of course, put your little scraps in a little pile because we'll utilize them here on some of those detailed works. So again, if you're creating this one, you probably did the plaid one so far, you could do the chevron and so you're going to have one on this page, but then the chevron shows up again over here, which is why I'm having you cut two of each pattern. Oh, two of each pattern. Taking your 12 by 12 paper and trimming that down to two five and a half by nine and a half. How's everyone doing? work done at the beginning so that's kind of what we'll do and we'll be able to hey, Susan, can you go over the size again of what you're cutting yeah so these are five and a half by nine and a half and so right now if you just joined the first step was to take your file folders and cut those in a half um i'll just briefly recap this while everyone else is finishing their up so we took a file folder and then we cut this down to five and a half inches. So you go to five and a half inches and you cut that down and then you'll do the other one at five and a half inches as well. So you're gonna do two of those. So you'll end up with four, five and a half inches. And we're gonna leave the length, the length that it is, okay? If you have one that has a file tab where it's at the bottom, um, keep that intact because that's how we're going to get this look here in the back. Now, once you have those trimmed out, we're taking our sheets of paper. If you are using the same exact paper as this sample here, then you should have five um, pattern sheets of paper. But if you're using your own pattern paper, then just grab five of your um, 12 by 12 sheets of paper that you're going to be using. And we're going to trim those down. So here's my file to five and a half inches by nine and a half. Okay.
And technically, we'll need um, one of these uh, was cardstock, which was this page right here. So if it's technically five sheets and a half. <laughs> So you'll need one more piece out of another pattern, whether you're doing the orange card stock again, if you're doing this specific one, then go ahead and grab your orange card stock and cut that one down to five and a half by nine and a half as well. Okay. The other pieces that we recommended, like the orange um, eight and a half by 11 card stock and the glitter paper, which I still had tons from making this first sample. So that's what I'm using on the second one here. Um, again, whether using glitter paper or just plain cardstock, either one will be adorable. Um, those are for the little details. So we don't need to cut any pages out of those. Cover pages for this. We'll come back. Let me grab one more. And cut my last one. So and half by nine and a half. Okay. We can put our paper trimmer away for a little bit. We're using our designer templates and a pair of scissors for some of those details. So Kind of recap here, we're gonna end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're all good. Going too okay. fast. Going too fast. Okay, I I can chat for a moment. Can you see the comment, Susan? Oh. There we go. Sorry. What size did you cut the additional file folder pages? Tammy, these file folders pages, these are just five and a half inches. So here, I'll do another one. You're just going to take the file folder. You're going to put it in uh, horizontal here. And then you're gonna to go to five and a half inches. Okay. And then you take the other one and go to five and a half inches. So it basically just shaves off a little bit of excess, which we're not gonna use this. So you will do that twice with two uh, letter size file folders. So we'll end up with four of those and 11 pattern papers. So taking five 12 by 12 sheets, well, five and a half 12 by 12 sheets and cutting those down, uh, getting two out of each 12 by 12 sheet um, and cutting those down to five and a half by nine and a half. Okay. What is the paper collection you made? This one um, I just recommended. It was in the supplies list. It was from Hobby Lobby. Um, so this original sample uh, is from Hobby Lobby. Yeah. And then Sonia just um, put it in the comments there too. What is the company saying of the movie that Susan is using? I get that question all the time, but we, we scrap those. You know, we see those things. This is called a cutter pillar. And they're a little pricey, but I gave in about three years ago and bought one because I just tried so many different cutters and the blade would keep flying off. So, um, so far, I love it. I mean, I guess it's been a couple of years, but still love it. It's just heavy. So you see me putting it on the floor and bringing it back up because it is a hefty duty trimmer. Perfect. Okay, so as far as the how the album's gonna go together, this one, the file that I was mentioning that has the tab, 
this is going to become our back one. So these other ones, right, um, are going to just go inside. Of it. And the way that we just connect it is we're just going to, here, sorry, they're going to lay flat inside of each other. This situated so you guys can see that. So see, they're just going to lay right on top of each other. So like this one, see how it's laying? And then we um, just use a ribbon as the binding once we get to that point. But I like to lay mine together. I'm not going to bind it yet, but I like to lay it together so that I can, of course, coordinate my pattern papers as we go. Um, and we'll use this as a guidance for anyone that has that paper. Again, I'd, um, the only one that it has to be in a specific spot would be if you kept that tab intact as far as the back one goes. So that would be your bottom one. And then all the other ones will just lay inside of that one. So that's why, yes, you could add more if you'd like. Perfect. Susan, I think I missed a step. Okay. Did you cut off all the tabs other than the bottom tab? I haven't cut them off yet, but we will be. Oh, okay. But I haven't cut them off yet. Okay. So we're we're going to cut these little um, decorative designs out of each one as we go. Gotcha. <clears throat> I did the first page and I trimmed it out of the manila folder and then added my paper on and then the back paper. And I realized after doing that, then I had to cut the edge three times. So that's why I'm like, I think we're just gonna adhere our papers to the front and back and then trim that edge out so that we're only cutting the design out once. So, so I'm just gonna share the next step for those that might be at that point. Again, I'm keeping an eye on the comments. So if you need a question, just let me know. So in that case, we want to adhere the first top pattern to the top of our folder, our, our DIY album here, right? So if you're using this one, do the plaid. Um, if you're using your own, choose whatever pattern kind of sets the overall mood. I mean, it's the cover. And so you'll want to keep in mind that this black will be on top of it. But I think the covers can be where you get away with maybe a little bit more of a busier pattern, say something like that or, or whatever you might be using. I guess the question, like how many, if any of you guys are using the specific paper and have questions or if you're using your own stash, you guys let me know on those questions. Okay, I just use adhesive, plain old adhesive. Um, now, usually with, when I scrapbook, I don't add as much adhesive, but whenever I'm doing mini albums or DIY because you know, they're a little bit more in, interactive. And so I always make sure that I add adhesive good amounts to the edges. So go ahead and add a good amount of adhesive. To those edges. Okay. Oh, and if you love to ink, then go ahead and do a swipe of inking. Whenever I have straight edges, I, I just shared this in our last class. I do a cheat and I just use the ink pad. Um, but if you have a dauber, go ahead and ink those edges if you want that ink too. Okay, so then I pull this up. Again, you can pull apart the album if you want. You don't have to keep it together. And then I'm gonna line that up on the edge of my file folder and then just place that down. So hopefully you guys are using forgiving-ish adhesive. And then place that down. So we're gonna come back and take off the excess. Um, once we do the first one, actually, I think I'm gonna move these out for a moment. I know which one's my, bottom, my top one. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move the other ones out for a moment. All right. Now we're also going to add the back 
pattern. So again, this can be any pattern that you might be using. If you're using this specific paper, um, in this design, I use the chaperone pattern. So go ahead and grab that. And that's gonna go on the inside of the cover page here. So just go ahead and grab any one of those. Again, if you wanna ease those edges, I always think it's worth inking. I'm a huge, I, I love the inking effect, especially because I'll for sure ink my little pieces. So I think adding a little uh, ink to the edges will help. Okay. So again, add some adhesive, like right on the crease of the bind. I do like a one, two, three. And then right on the edge, as close as you can to that edge just so that um, it keeps it nice and tight. <clears throat> We're gonna have to go back and add some adhesive to those edges. So um, probably I wouldn't recommend adding an adhesive yet. So we're gonna be able to just add a little bit of adhesive once we trim those edges up. You'll be very clear once we do our first one. So go ahead and add that pattern paper down. Okay. okay. Do you want me to stop there? Give everyone a moment to catch up. Yes, please. Okay. Because my top sheet is bigger, and of course I glued, and so it's oh. sticking to the sheets underneath. That's okay. So trim up the edges. I had that actually with another one. I was like, what in the world? I, I cut all those. I remember with this one and I just had to trim it up a little, but yes, trim it up just a tad. I was like okay. Okay, five and a half, but somehow one of my pages was off at the time. We will be using haunted accessories. So if you already have it out, great. If not, the first one we're going to be using is Haunted number six here on this front cover. Okay, so that's, that was the front. This is the back. And what are we putting on the back? We haven't gotten to the back piece yet. I'm going to show you guys the first cover page. Oh, so we're, we're gluing to the inside? Yes, so the tab that is here, the one that has that tab down at the bottom that I recommended, this is gonna be the first one we're playing with. And I go in ahead and put the other ones to the side for a moment. And so you're going to adhere a pattern paper to the front of it, of basically the cover. This is gonna be the cover of your book. And then you're gonna go ahead and cover the inside of that page too, which is basically this one. Okay. okay, so if you have a roller or you can just use your paper trimmer, it has a roller on it. <clears throat> We want to go to seven and a half inches. And I'm just going to make a mark there, you guys. So again, we're not cutting anything off because we're going to do it all at once. So go to seven and a half inches and just basically draw a little line for reference. I wonder if I can get closer to my, oh, it doesn't zoom in. Okay, that's big enough for you guys. Are we good to go forward at this point? Good to go? Okay, so on this first cover, we're gonna go- Excuse gonna, me, mm -hmm. did, you say, did you say seven and a half or seven? Seven and a half. Okay, thank you. Seven and a half. And so again, just make a pencil mark right there. We're just gonna use that as a guideline. And now we're gonna take our haunted number six. And you're gonna place it down at the base of the album, right? 
And you want the, the peak of this to hit seven and a half. So see how this peak is hitting right at seven and a half. So where you made that mark at seven and a half inches, that's where this edge of this top of the house is going to hit. And then the bottom of it is gonna be the base of your album. Then we're all we're doing is we're gonna trace, so line that up with the bottom and you're gonna trace. This doesn't go all the way to the top of your album. So you're gonna have to kind of just fill in that extra piece but only trace the right side of the house onto the front cover. It's kind of hard to see, huh? So again, all I did was trace. I went to my seven and a half mark. I made sure that that edge of the top of the roof went to about the seven and a half inch. And then the bottom was aligned with my straight edge of my bottom of my album. And then I traced here, 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 here. And I just, you don't have to fill it in much, but just a little bit up. Um, just keep that, that pencil line going. <clears throat> now we're gonna go ahead and trim this whole page out together. So you're just gonna take a pair of scissors. <coughs> and you're just gonna follow that mark and we're gonna cut, cut this little edge out of this page. I'm gonna flip that upside down. On the first album, I used the thinner paper. On this one, it's a little bit thicker. So luckily these uh, awesome Tim Holtz scissors really go through layers. So that's what it's gonna look like here. This is kind of where I was saying, maybe you don't have to add any adhesive um, to those edges because you're probably gonna to wanna to go back in and now just add a little adhesive to those exact edges on the right side. And then the same thing on the other side. So again, I think the key with DIY albums is making sure that you add your adhesive on those edges so that it doesn't pull up the paper when, uh, when you're flipping through the pages and you're seeing it. You could use liquid adhesive too to get inside of there if you prefer to kind of make it really nice and tight. If there's like a, a liquid adhesive that you prefer. You can either ink the edges one at a time, or we can just go back at the end and ink it. But I think, of course, it just cleans up those little trimmings, little snip looks, cleans it all up. Okay, we did it, page one, <laughs> page one done. How's everyone doing? Okay, so I'm, I th think we're gonna just go through the rest of the pages and then we're gonna go back and decorate on top of each of our pages. So now that we kind of have that process down, it's just basically doing that same thing. So in this case, again, we want to go to the next page. So um, all of these would lay inside of each other. So it's not like, it's not like where you put them in and it's like this one and then, this one and then this one. You basically want to lay them flat on top of each other and then close it. Right? That way you know that your pages are in the order as you go along. So you have page one and then your page two. So in this case of this pattern would be the black polka dots would go here on the top of this second page. <clears throat> okay. If you're using, again, any pattern you're choosing, go ahead and pick that out. Specifically on this design, I did the little glitter black cat. So just if you want to make sure if you're doing it on black, black to have a little bit of contrast, yet I did black polka dots with black and it seems to work. It's all about the vibe. 
it would be fun to have two different versions of this album. I think I'm actually going to give them to my daughters. We went to uh, Simple Scrappy Crop just, gosh, a week and a half ago um, here in Carolina. Um, and it was super fun. It was super fun to be at a crop again and just hang out with, uh, you know, of course, other creators. And um, I was like, well, if my two daughters can come because I'm about to, they're about to leave me for 18 months. And so I was trying to find as many times to spend with them. And so they end up going and working on, Abby worked on this little other type of file folder and Madison did some bullet journaling, but it was fun. It was fun to go to a crop again. And so I think I'm gonna print off those pictures and give these a little mini albums to them with those memories. So again, if you, when you're adding your paper, just make sure you follow those edges. And I'm just gonna do the inside binding and then the top and the bottom. And I'm not gonna do my right side. I'm just gonna leave it until oh. the final touches. Even if your folder shows a little bit, if it's like not right on, that's where I think you could go back and blend those together, say, so like, see how this file is showing just a little bit more. Either you can trim it off if you really want to, or you can just kind of blend it in the two layers together, which I think is also what is so awesome about inking. It just really helps blend layers um, cohesively, I think, together too. But again, you can trim it off if you prefer. Just take a moment to trim it. Okay, so the other side of this page, so again, keeping those intact so that you can make sure you're doing it in the, the right order if need be. If you are just like adding papers and you're like, you know what, I'm happy with that, whatever the background, then just cover every single one of them. Um, as far as this paper, the uh, plaid comes back into play here on the uh, back side of this second page. Okay. Charlie Brown, classic. Okay. So on the second page, we're gonna do the same process. We're going to go to about eight and a quarter on this one. Okay, so go to about eight and a quarter and then make a mark on this page. That's just gonna be our guideline. And then you can take any, in this case, I just did a, a general uh, border shape. So not like specific um, elements design, just a general one. Um, I used the Cheerful 2A. Actually, was it? Yes, the Cheerful 2A um, on this one. But as you can see, any design. So you're just gonna line that up 
depending on which border, because um, some of them extended out to six inches and some of them are five and a half inches. So depending on which border, tiny border that you're using, you're just gonna, again, you line that edge of the very edge of that border up to that mark that you made and then trace that design out. If you wanna make sure you're straight, you can start at the top. Um, I think either way is just adding a little trimming, a little depth of trim. I know what we're doing here, so. Okay. So there's my mark that I made at eight and a quarter, and then I just went kind of straight up to the um, edge of that mark and then trimmed out that design. And I'm gonna go ahead and follow that line and then we're gonna cut it up. Go ahead and put these excess into your little scrap pile. I'm sure you can utilize it, especially if you go back and add more pages or do different things. You can um, use these other pieces. So, for example, this, these borders, right? We can find a place to use them. Okay, then I'm going to ink that edge. it just cleans it up nicely and blends it a little bit more towards that foundational piece. If you need some adhesive, again, making sure you protect those. And you can go back at the end if you prefer. If you a little bit of liquid adhesive, you can stick right in there on those edges. Because you're flipping, you know, as you're flipping, that's going to get a lot of interaction, um, those edges. So just make sure that you're adhering them good and tight on both sides, too. Okay. Anyone else just blown away that it's in December already or December, October? Oh my goodness. It feels like December because all of the uh, Christmas stuff is always out so early. I don't know why it shocks us. It happens every year, but it still does shock me because it confuses me, actually. I'm like, wait, is October over, right? We already did Halloween. I'm like, oh no, we haven't. We haven't done Halloween yet. Okay, so we have two of our pages done. And you can see how each of those little decorative edges just adds another layer of design and texture in its own way to it. No, mm -hmm. oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this page, but if you, anybody needs me to go back. So for those that are on to the third page, again, make sure that you have these lined up the right so this one goes inside of there and then these lay flat inside of those okay. so we're going to open that back up which is going to show the third page all right so this one is the stripe pattern the bigger stripe on both sides and this one's covered mostly in the design. We're going to do a little pumpkin off the edge, but a, a general basic photo will fill the spot. Of course, if you want to add any other details to any of the pages, definitely by all means um, do. But again, I was just kind of show, sharing that so that if you're trying, if you're not using this exact paper, for example, and you're trying to decide what type of pattern paper to choose from, maybe the papers that you already picked out for this project, then you can kind of know it's not going to be too busy. So again, probably in a way, a place that you could get away with a little bit busier pattern or a bigger pattern, like the bigger stripes, they're wider. Um, than that.
And um, I did the front back here. Sometimes just picking that pattern of paper. I was thinking I'd do orange, but then I think, no, my pumpkin's orange. There's going to be a lot of orange on that page if I did that. So I don't think I'm going to do that. So again, something else to pay attention to if you are pulling out some of your own paper. Go to the bowling green, having a little piece of. Hopefully, you guys got in the zone now. So, because that's all this is, it's just kind of getting into that zone for the fish first initial process of it. And then um, hopefully, it's getting a little faster as you go from page to page. And then you can flip it and do the other one. We're going to actually trim this one down shorter than the other ones. Um, we're going to make a mark at six inches if anyone's there. This is going to be six inches here. Excuse me, Susan. Yes. So it's six inches on that one, but how many inches on the first previous one? Oh, on the previous ones? Okay, so. Uh, no, the previous one that you just did. Oh, this one with the border edge? Yes. Okay, that one was eight and a quarter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, um, was the third page then at six? Yes. You cut it at six? Six inches, so you're gonna make a mark at six inches. This one is a little bit different in here. Let me get to that one. Let me adhere this page down. Well, I guess it's just, you're gonna, you're gonna do a straight cut here, right? So you're still gonna make a mark at six inches, at six inches. So you still want to make that mark at six inches. And then we're gonna use the haunted number five on that. I almost put my paper upside down. <laughs> Pay attention to that too. The direction of your album, make sure you don't put it upside down. And I can come back to, I'm gonna go forward, but then I can come back and then go forward kind of like what we're doing. So if you're onto this page, then yes. So you're gonna to go to six inches. And then again, I'm gonna kind of just draw a, a, a mark as a reference point at six inches on the width. And then we're gonna take our haunted number five and we're gonna go down, basically you can eye it if you really want to, you could just do a straight line from top to bottom. So six inches and then just do straight line. If you're using pencil, if any of it shows um, here in a little bit, we'll just of course erase it, but we're gonna add a little bit on top. So um, in this case, I ended up cutting the pumpkin out and removing those pieces and putting it on. So that's why I was like, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. You can keep it as one pattern color, but we're gonna go through that process, okay? So we're gonna take haunted number five and you're gonna place it down towards the bottom of your album, probably about a half inch. You see how this is not straight to the edge of the album or the base of the album. And then as far as where that line comes down, 
you want about uh, a third of that uh, pumpkin hanging over the edge. And then all we're gonna do is trace the other portion of that pumpkin. Susan? Yep. How far out does the edge of that pumpkin go? From like from the center of the book out, how far does it go? Oh, from this right here, the edge of the book? No, from the center of the book. Okay, good, okay. Out to the edge of that pumpkin, how far is it? It's about five inches. Okay, thank you. Yep. So again, we only traced that little bit of the pumpkin because we'll have kind of this straight edge component. But then we're gonna cut another pumpkin out and it's gonna go on top and cut it. So see like on this one. You don't want to cut it out of your base so you have that sturdiness of those uh, textures being there. Okay. But if you went ahead and did a straight line, which I guess I would recommend, then I would cut that down first. and then try to get up around that pumpkin. This one's a little, little tougher to get in and out. So just take your time on it. I'm just gonna detach it and then go in and do the details. Keep it where it's that same pattern as the page. I think it's kind of cute to add a little bit of um, diversity as far as the patterns go. So I do want to say, point that out though. If you wanted to keep it where it kind of bled out with the same pattern, you could definitely keep it that way. To get inside of this stem, I'm noticing that it just, you just need to slow down a little bit. So I'll give everyone kind of a moment to catch up to that point because we definitely want to take your time putting that out. Since we are going to put another pattern over the top, you could take these extra layers off. That's going to be all hidden there. I think I'm going to. So that it just kind of goes back to that excess there. So on this page, we could have probably done it the other way. If you haven't gotten to this one yet, you probably could just trim it first and then put a six by five inch paper on top. If that makes sense. Did I lose anyone? Take that as a no, okay. So you're cutting the page at six inches. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. Beth, basically correct. If you are just adhering the top pages, technically on this one, you could just, before you put these patterns on top, you could just cut the manila folder out um, using the pumpkin edge and then put a six by five and a half sheet on top and a six and a half item sheet on top. And then we'll go ahead and cut these little pumpkins out to layer on top of this. As far as a, a, another pattern. Did you guys opt in for glitter paper or are you guys using cardstock? I think it's a little, it's fun. Um, I always like when I find places to use a little bit of glitter. I don't use excessive, of course, in my overall style, but. Something like this, little mini albums. They're just perfect for little texture elements and details. So we'll come back and cut those. Like I said, we'll get all our pages done and then we'll come back and add 
the little details to each of our page. Okay, so now we're back to just using a border again and this edging I used Cheerful 3B is the one that I used here. And the width of this page is seven and a half inches. Okay, so go ahead and cover that. <clears throat> In this case, I would cover it like we were doing um, on those. Okay, and we, um, hopefully you guys aren't ahead on this. So we are, this one only used three of those. I thought I used four, but I guess I was thinking ahead too far in the next class that we're doing uh, in November. But, <clears throat> so we actually don't need this fourth one on this page. So this was just one, two, three. So see how the three pages are here? So go ahead and pull this one out. But you should still have this, right? So we're on to that fourth page. Basically, it leaves them flat open at this point. Unless you want to add more pages, then by all means, add more pages. Okay. Ink the edges if you want to ink those edges. And you said, Susan, it mm -hmm. cuts it seven, seven and, and then what? A half, seven and a half. Seven and an eighth? A half. Oh, seven and a half. Yep, seven and a half. Now, is this if this is an extra page or if is that the end? This is the page. This is as if the way that this album is. Um, I was having us keep this fourth one, but technically it's only three. Oh. Well, I have a fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you went, if you're already ahead, then so you seven and a half is. Then seven and a half is still good. Yes, yeah, seven and a half is still good. Correct. Okay. And what was it? It was two, two B. Oh, the one that I used. Yes, it was three B. Three B. Three B. Okay. Okay. So you want to cover that front and back and then turn that one edging out at well, only one time for all these, this one page. So this one was just a basic orange card stock. And then over here was keeping numbers again for anyone that might be on that page. So you're just going to flip this and then do the gingham pattern on the back here. And this is fun. You can probably do a lot of these decorative edges. You know, once you kind of have your album made up, it's just going in and maybe using one of the accessories. And this is a Halloween theme, but I could think this could be really cute. Oh, yeah, I don't even know. Like, I think it could be really cute even as an Easter one, or I'm trying to think of what accessory comes to mind. Um, even a snowman one could be really cute, where you kind of, again, mix it. So some of them have 
the edge and then we're gonna layer on top and then some of them just use tiny borders um, in those edges. Susan? Yes. Um, on the, I guess it's the page you're doing now. How, what did you say to mark it? Seven and a half. So as far as the width of it goes, you're gonna to go to uh -huh. seven and a half inches. And that one. And then I used uh, Cherish 3B or Cheerful, sorry. Cheerful 3B or again, if you have a border that you prefer or use, you would just line that up with that seven and a half inch mark. So for example, I'm gonna place my ruler down and make that mark a seven and a half. And then just go ahead and place that edge of this design meeting up right at seven and a half. I really do love these Tim Holtz scissors. I've even cut like metal and wire with them. Probably not the best, but they cut through a lot of thick stuff. They're pretty great. Okay, before I ink that, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more adhesive to these edges to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm gonna do that on both sides of sheets of paper. And then I'm gonna ink it. It really keeps those edges nice and clean. So if you're using any type of ink, I definitely think when you cut that many layers, it just needs to be blended a little bit. So kind of rubbing the dauber in and out of those. And you'll want to do it on both sides. So that side, but then also flip it and clean up the other side as well. All right, I'll give everyone a moment. We're getting towards the end of our covering of our pages. What time are we at? Okay. So the next page is the chevron pattern. And then on the back is um, the white stripes again. So if you're using these exact papers, then those are what you can use on those pages as you see it here. And we're gonna be using the bat a la carte. So I pulled the bat a la carte in with, of course, using the haunted accessory set. And it just fit perfectly up in that corner, kind of flying away. All right. So this one is um, going to basically stay the width of the album. So let me show you it closed here. Oh, just kidding. I think they turned off about a half inch. Let me measure it really fast. Yeah, so this was eight and three quarters. So you just, you probably actually want to trim that down if you're gonna do a straight cut, go ahead and trim that down first. Or I mean, actually put your papers on and then trim it down to eight and three quarters. And then we'll just go ahead and trim the bat out of the corner piece here. 
Okay. So you want another pattern in mind. So I'm going to quickly cut another one of these down to five and a half. Nine and a half. And to demonstrate that, I'll kind of walk through it as I do it here. I mean, we're still covering the front and back of this page. We still want to do that. And my front cover. And then the back cover. So the back cover of this one, again, is the large stripes if you're doing this exact one. Every time you see that black polka dot, I'm telling you, I do like polka dots. They make me smile. Every time I see it, I'm like, it's so cute. So simple and so cute. I'll take those inside pages out for a moment. I don't know if you guys ran into that, but I think it will be helpful to take those. Susan, the, the part that has the back cut out of it, is it the back side of the short paper? Say it again. Okay, the one that the bat, you cut the bat out of. What page is that? This is going to be, if we're going off of pages, it's one, two, three, four, five. Is that where you're at? I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I think I got messed up somewhere along the way. <laughs> Does the bat page follow the pumpkin page? So no. if you are, yeah, so if you're laying them flat, right? So they need to lay, actually, let's just take this apart. You could put your pages in. I mean, if they layer nicely into it, but. Yeah, so this is how they all lay inside of each other, right? So we kept our back one with the tab and then place the other one in this one. But then when you close it, it goes with the house and then the border design, then the pumpkin back to a border design and then to the bat. And then our last page will be the tab. And we're just gonna keep it at the tab. So hopefully that gave some clarity a little bit. So if you're on the back design and once you get it covered, which I haven't covered mine yet, I'm just putting the back paper on it. Um, if you're just working with this one piece alone, then we can move that one for a moment. Then this is the one that I was saying, you could just go to nine and three quarters. Right, 
right? So the width of it is, um, sorry, nine inches. We're going to nine inches. And I think you just take your paper trimmer and trim it down to nine inches because we're gonna be trimming the design out of the top of the corner. So for example, I'm gonna take my paper trimmer, turn this page, or actually, Go to nine inches where the um, seam of that binding is. I'm going to go straight to nine inches. It looks kind of thick. Even my paper paper won't do it. So, nope, that's not going to work. Well, depending on your paper trimmer, we're just doing a straight line and cut it up because my scissors are heftier than that. But basically, you're going to go to nine inches and you're just gonna do a straight cut. Probably if you were using thinner paper, it probably would go, but this that I'm using is the thicker QB paper, QB club paper. And then just make sure those are here down pretty good and actually stay pretty secure on mine. And you can add a little ink. Okay, I'll give it a moment for us to kind of all get there. But then, yeah, we're just gonna take our bat and you're gonna line it up basically from a corner to corner. Like that. And we're only gonna trace the top of the bat out. So Cindy, hopefully that helped, yes. So you're just gonna um, trace the top and you're gonna cut a straight inch. So you're basically only taking about, I don't know, half inch off or so. Okay. So again, you kind of want those points of the bat to go off of the pages. So this point goes off of that page and that the other wing goes off of that corner. So just kind of aligning it. You can have it more up, you can have it more diagonal. Um, I think you're the way it works. For reference though, this inside wing of the bat meets, uh, it's probably about five in a, um, a quarter, so five and a fourth is where mine's about hitting. So if you just put that inside wing to about five and a quarter and then kind of um, kitty, kitty corner it where that other wing is going to the other edge of your page. Okay. And then you're just gonna trim out that top of the bat Turn that down a little bit. If you guys can't hear me at any point, just let me know too. Okay. On this one, I actually think it's easier to go from side to side and then just clip in on the ears. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. And then I'm just I'm going to cut off that excess and then just clip in on the ears instead of continuing my cut. So then I'm just going to snip in on those ears. Now on this one, you'll want to make sure to go back in and again, add a little adhesive inside of those spacing. Go 
those things. My son had a uh, Batman birthday party like four years ago. I still have yet to scrap with those and uh, use this all apart with those memories because I think it would be perfect. But not yet done those yet. And then go ahead and clean those up. I actually had quite a bit of pencil, so I'm just going to ink right over those on this one. Um, yes, you'll still need the five pieces. Yes. Uh, Veronica, the sheets were right. I just, um, you needed two file folders, but we're only using three of the four that uh, two would create, but you, you needed two still. And I just was thinking, oh, we'll use all four, which you could absolutely add another page in uh, for that. But you'll need a couple more papers if you're gonna do that. Okay, if you're on to the next one, I'm gonna go to flip it just so we can you can see, um, well, really it's polka dot here on this last page. And this last page is just going to stay as a tab. And we're just gonna put a little word that kind of peeks itself out when this is all together, right? Just kind of peeks out there. And then you'll cover the back. Um, you could choose not to cover the back. Uh, in this specific one, I you know, thought it would be cute just kind of displayed during Halloween time, maybe on an entry table or like by my tear tray or something. And so I thought I would cover the back just so from a decorative, it felt complete. So, um, okay. So then that was just the plaid in this case on that back or whatever two sheets basically you have left, which are these two sheets for me. Am I missing one of the pattern papers in your original one? I'm only counting four, gingham, stripe, um, polka dot, and chevron. Yeah, uh, you needed two of the gingham sh sheets. Ah, that's okay. That's, well, and that's what I thought when I start cutting things out, I'm like, I think I need two of the gingham, which I'm using different ones, so I, you know, I, I have two of those, but I'm like, there's only four patterns. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. That's where I'm like, I'm only counting four different patterns. Nope. Yeah. Okay. You are Thank right. You. Four different patterns, but two of one of them. So, yes. All right. Are. Thank you. So, on this one, I actually would recommend that we trim out the top page first. And then we'll trim out the second or the back. So for example, go ahead and adhere the pattern to the top, right? And it's going to go all the way onto the edges on this one because we're not going to add, cut anything decorative out of the edge. Because if you put the front and the back on, it might be hard to, well, it, you definitely want to be able to see the tab and you want to trim that tab out. So you're going to, adhere the front and then we're going to flip it over and use that you know the, the tab as it is as a little tracing guideline we're going to have to cut it twice out but this way you can get that trace out of your paper and then flip it over and add the paper pattern to the back
and flip it back over and trim off that excess from the front view. Okay. Keep those edges. Okay, I'm gonna pause there for a moment and give us all a chance to kind of get those. If you need me to go back on a page, let me know. So Susan, what did you do on the back tab? So the back tab, I adhered my pattern to the top, right? And we're just keeping the tab, the um, design of the tab as it is. So you adhere right. your pattern to the top. And then before you adhere the pattern to the back, flip it over and cut out the excess that you see from the front paper. And then adhere it to, or adhere your second pattern to the back. And then flip it back over and cut out the excess that you see from the other view. Okay. So you're just tracing and then and then cutting the excess off before you put the paper down. Yeah. So yes, I didn't even trace it. I just used the tab as a guideline to cut around it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So you could kind of, you know, even if you trim it a little with your scissors, you're kind of just blending it all in. So you just kind of want to follow. Well, this one doesn't have a tab, but. You want to follow that tab and bring it out as part of your design. Because if you keep doing the same rhythm, how we were kind of covering the front and the back and then trimming out the edge and then covering the front and the back, you, you'll, uh, you'll just be straight papers. You won't see where your tab is at. It's always a satisfying part when you get to this part and you can kind of just kind of feel it and you're like, okay, sweet. <laughs> Not quite done yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> These mini albums, are, they sure are fun to have. They definitely take a little bit of, little fun time doing them, but they're super fun. I always enjoy when I create them. Honestly, I think the covering it is kind of just the most time consuming part of it. Because then once we decorate each page, it's just like decorating, decorating small little canvases, like a little, like as if you were creating a card, it's just a small little canvas that you're designing on top of. Paula, yes. Sonia said she'll make sure that everyone gets the replay uh, link. Um, so you should be able to get it um, in that RSVP list. So she'll make sure to get that sent. It usually takes about two or three days to get that though, just a heads up on that. <clears throat> Let's see, what do you still need? Oh, I already answered that question, okay. Okay, so as far as the front cover goes, now we're gonna take our Haunted Six and we're just going to layer another full design on top of it. And you can see, I once you cut the one out of the top, you could keep it as far as a little bit away from that edge so it just kind of looks like a layer. You can line it up straight with that edge if you want it to be kind of tight. Um, I just I just moved mine out a little bit so it kind of gave a little bit of a 3D look. I kind of like a shadow behind it. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and trace a haunted house out. You can you can create your haunted house however you want. You can do uh, cute little window shades on them. Um, I kept mine pretty simple for the sake of the class, but um, you know you can like use little. Anyways, I'll show some. We'll see how we get to that. Everyone's putting it out. Uh, and I use the black. 
um, glitter paper, black cardstock. If you want to do it out of the color, you can completely do it out of color. Um, whenever you're using this glitter paper, of course, you're going to want to trace on the back. If you're tracing on the back of a pattern, you need to flip your designer templates. So for example, we want it to showcase this way, right, with the black pattern on showing on top. So in order for us to do that, if we're tracing on the back of this paper, we need to flip our designer template and trace it with the top of that, that elongated roof on the left. So that way, when we flip it back over with the gl black glitter paper showing, it'll then go back to the right side. So if you're flipping it over and tracing it on the back side of paper, you just need to also flip your designer template. Go ahead and trace that edge. Now, as far as the windows, those are stencils. So we'll use them as a stencil. I did not cut them out with an X-Acto knife. Just want to mention that in case you're not familiar with these little stencil features sometimes in the designer templates. I don't know why I'm tracing them after I said that. So you don't need to trace the windows out, I guess is my point. We're just tracing the outside of the house. We'll come back and add the windows uh, to the top. And of course, anytime you cut out an accessory, especially on the large sheet of paper, I always recommend to detach it first. And then go ahead and trim up the details. You just kind of guide that design. Whenever I see straight tips like this, I just naturally go into more of a clipping mode where I just turn it and then clip in and out of those. So for example, kind of clip off the roof here. I'm going to have glitter all over my hands again. <laughs> and then I'll probably touch my face and then I'll have glitter on my face. That is the nature of glitter, it seems. So red, yes, the each layer does kind of peek through, peek out from the one in front of it, the whole book. So, um, you know, the, the two layers here kind of lay up to each other, but this front one is a little bit more inwards. This one comes out a little bit. So you can see this layering behind this one. You see the edge of the pumpkin here. See a little bit of that pink. Then you see a little bit of that bat. And then you see the tab. So yes, kind of gives you this waterfall uh, decorative edge. Okay, so this is where you can have fun and really decorate up your, your haunted house, however you'd like. Um, to add a little bit of details, so I, um, I just trimmed a little bit of the top roof and this roof. And so let me grab a scrap of paper here. If you are doing the cardstock that, you know, the very classy traditional look here. You can use that. Let me see what scraps of paper I have here. Go ahead and use some empty. It's so cute. It has a little chevron or scallop edge in it. Okay, so to do that, basically you're just going to trace out the top part of the houses. So you're just going to go back and you can trace out a little triangle. It's not going to meet up all the way. So you're going to just trace out the parts that you see. And then if you need to, you can just kind of connect those two dots together. And then we're going to trace that piece out. As far as maybe a little um, slim rooftop here. So the way I did that is I 
Let me see, will it fit right here? I just have to go up a little bit. I trace the top of the roof, right? And this little uh, peak edge here. And then I moved it down and then traced it out again. And then you just kind of close or finish out this, that edge. We all in the zone? Looks like we're all in the zone. That's always a good thing. It means you're in a flow state. Hey, Susan, I'm still putting paper on my pages. Okay, I'll slow down for a moment. The one where you um, use the um, cheerful template, the B. Okay. How, what did you mark that at? Yeah, I'll go back there. Um, that one is at uh, seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay. Is my screen still showing? I think I changed the view and I realized I can't change. Oh, the I can still see you. You're good, Susan. Okay. Sometimes I change the view to see what you guys and then I realized I can't do that because then you won't see my hands. All right. Susan, how many? We're just cutting one bat, right? I mean, one house. Yes. There's not a house on the inside. No house on the inside, correct. Okay. Yeah. Are there two bats? There are two bats. When you get to the bat page? Yep, I no? just bats there. Say it again, I'm sorry, I think I spoke over you. It's okay. On the bats, there's two bats on that one. Oh, okay. So I designed it with two bats on that one, but I didn't design it with two bats on here because I wanted to add that photo there. But you could, um, let's see. Maybe do that in a three by four photo if you want to trim it down a little bit more. So you could adjust it as you go if you like, you know, having one on each side. But that's what it looks like with just one. Okay. okay. So kind of, um, again, you can add little decoratives. You can come back and even decorate your house a little bit more. If you printed off the principle and you're gonna use that, then that's, I just trimmed this one out and added it here and just a little ghost kind of coming out of the house kind of look. So if that's, if you haven't printed those off, you can always go back and add those little details, of course, um, afterwards. And we'll make sure that you get uh, the videos and the uh, images so we can use those to finish up those details. Susan, where do we get the printout from? Uh, the printout was in an email, I believe. Sonia? Yep, it was in the first email that um, you should have received after RSVP, but don't worry because I am putting the link in the chat. So put it in the chat and we'll make sure that it's also in the follow-up email. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> and Susan, you said that we would be able to reference this video again? Yeah, we'll get it to you. It'll just take about two or three days to get it, but we'll make sure we send it out to you. Great, thank you. Yeah. Okay. 
I know we kind of all go different. So there's different speeds and different things, and that's okay. I often get told, I'm like, you're going too fast. I'm like, oh. <laughs> is anyone caught up at this point or is somebody ahead of me? I think even some of you might be ahead of me. I'm just curious more about pacing for future. Um, I use pop-up on these. So I, I feel like that's a good place that you could use pop-up is like on the rooftop and on the window pieces. It's kind of a good place to use them. Um, and it seemed to work just fine on top of the glitter paper. I was, I had to test it for a moment and then I kind of pulled at it and, you know, tugged at it a little bit, but uh, it seemed to work pretty good. Which was kind of an added other bonus because I think if you use regular adhesive, you might have to use something a little bit stronger on top of this glitter paper. Susan, I love watching you and my dream is to catch up to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's too funny. I know. I'm sorry, Susan, where did I, I I know where the orange for the rooftops came from. They came from little scraps, but the, did you just trace out the windows and out of scraps and just glued them on the top? Okay, so yeah, so then these little pieces yeah. of stencils, I just traced those out of white cardstock and then cut these little pieces out okay. and put them on top, correct. Gotcha, so. okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're doing more of a traditional orange, black, white, I think the white windows works great. If you want to kind of, you can even throw maybe like, I was thinking about doing yellow as my windows for this one, just because it has a little bit of yellow. Hey, Susan, mm -hmm. could you show us how you did the slim line rooftop again? Yep. So, So you're gonna just trace that portion out, right? So we're gonna take the shorter roof here and we're gonna trace the top. You can only go to this point here on the right side and then you're gonna do the little uh, edge there. So this is all you're gonna be able to trace out. Then you're gonna take the template again and you're just gonna move it down. So that way you can trace out the triangle again creating just a little bit of a slim rooftop. On the right side, basically all I did is, you'll see here, I just kind of brought it down to a point and then you can just kind of trim it off. So you have to fill that in just a little bit, but that's ultimately what you're looking like. It's kind of like a little bit of a tent. So you okay, thank you. Yeah, trace it, move it down. So I'll, I'll try to, as you guys are doing that, I'm going to just kind of um, add my windows and I'm going to try to do some shutters just so you could see how cute. They're not on the template, but just adding little extra little pieces to the side um, is really cute. I didn't do that on this one because I kept it very simple, but uh, with the haunted accessory, like I've done that on a scrapbook layout and it's, it was super fun. So let me see if I can get one view of it so you guys can see. Oh yeah, I wanna add a little bit of a shutter to mine. It'll be cute. So again, on these stencil pieces, they basically just act as one of their own. And so you're gonna to have to just, they're not, they're not designed with the intent of using like an X-Acto knife. They're designed with the intent, in this case, to be used as a stencil along with the template. Okay. 
biggest thing mm -hmm. is to not lose these little pieces once you clip them out. Cause I usually just clip them and that, you can get them mixed up with your scraps of paper if you're not paying attention where they drop. little yellow windows, like as if light's coming out of it, super cute. You can also um, take a black pen. I'm just kind of throwing options out there for anything. If you're feeling inspired by one of them, feel free to do it. Um, but you can, uh, you know, take a black pen and maybe add little crisscross window panels. And I think what's great about this is you can get away with like more of a doodle look, right? So you don't, don't have to have perfect lines. So you can add little window panels if you want to. So that's what that looks like. You could even do a little bit of, um, if you have like yellow or white, depends on what color windows you're doing. Um, I was just gonna think stickles, like, right? If you wanted to add a little stickles or something to like a shimmer, but I don't know. I think with the glitter house, it depends if you're doing a glitter house. If you're doing like a card stock, black card stock, then maybe you could, you wanna add a little glitter to the windows for a little bit of a shimmer. That's another idea. And I love little details that I don't have to be perfect in per se. So again, I think with the style, it really works to not have perfect lines and, and don't worry about stressing over that either. I think it works personally. So what I did is I just did one down the middle and then two across on that. Yeah. So cute. It's fun to get into the little details sometimes and just kind of embrace it and just kind of enjoy the process. Okay, so now that I have my windows out, I'm gonna see what that looks like. I might even do a different colored door. <clears throat> just showing variations, right? So shutters, I was thinking of like a shutter. Maybe we add little green shutters and we have this little piece, I'll use the top of it. <clears throat> so I want my shutters to be the same length. So I'm just gonna take my window and trace another one out. We'll see, we'll see how this turns out. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done, like I said, super cute on a scrapbook layout. but I think it works either way. I think it's cute without it, but if you want a little bit pop of more color on added to it. So I'm gonna um, just I'm gonna trim that up just a little bit smaller probably. And of course you would wanna cut two of them out. And you could put them on either side of your, your window. Here, let me do one more to give us a look. You could do crooked wind like shutters, like they're falling off the window. <laughs> it is after all a haunted house. So kind of going for just a little bit of that spooky haunted house feel.
you guys play with your haunted house or decorate it in different ways or make it unique and different, you'll have to share it in the community. I would love to see it. So I won't do too much of the details yet. I might go back personally and um, add some things like that, but I just wanted to kind of show it as a reference point um, so you guys can see. So you can just get that house kind of component, that foundational house built, and then you can always come back and add more additional layers or cut our ghost out. So of the printable. If you haven't had a chance to print it, it's easy enough to add these uh, to the pages once you get a chance to do that. And in this case, just a little ghost. You can name your ghost. <laughs> I don't know. You can name it Boo. Boo the ghost. Am I the one that they think that was funny? <laughs> this is getting late. It just adds a little bit and it kind of hangs over the edge too, like that. Now, as far as the windows go, again, I use pop-up on them. Otherwise, I would recommend if you're using the glitter paper, like a some type of liquid adhesive, if you have one that you prefer. And I'm just using these small blue dots. So I actually luckily work right on the width of those windows. I think the biggest technical thing is always my working around my nails right now, but somehow it works out. So yeah, so that's a look at the stencils. And you'll see that in other designer templates. Well, one, we're gonna see it here in the Jack U Lantern. Um, so one pump, one that we did it where we just used the template and then another one um, here, I went ahead and traced those out. Again, using them as a stencil. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hear my house down and then we'll go to the next page. <clears throat> add my door, I'll come back and add my door and stuff. So the next page we, I did, um, well on the left you'll just add a photo and that is a four and a half by five photo. And you can just cut those out of white card stocks or whatever you wanna do, or you don't have to mat your pictures either. Um, if you wanna do three uh, or two three by fours, I think that would also fit here, let me see just to give you a visual. So you can, if you have the photo set, you can go back and kind of play around with uh, displays of photos. So for example, if you wanna kind of change up the orientation of that, you know, you could fit two on that page instead of one, five or four. So this is where, you know, it definitely varies from memories to memories. If you need to kind of adjust it, you could on that. So if you have your photos and you're working them in, um, the other thing is we could just simply, we could just cut out the pieces, right? And then go back and add your photos into it is often what I do with mini albums too. Okay. So this is just a photo over here. And so you can, if you want, you can write you know, if you're like, nope, I want to do a five and a half, or four and a half by five, if you want to write that on there. And then over on um, this page, you 
Oh, sorry, I was on the wrong page. This one, four and a half by five. Then over on this page right here, um, we're just gonna use a border again. And I, this is where your scraps come into play. So if you have that scrap still available and you like the pattern that you used, you can just incorporate that one in and place that down. And then of course, align photos up around it if you want. So you could take any one of those borders, for example. Um, this border was just again from Cheerful. So this one is Cheerful 1B and then Haunted number three is the little black cat. And I also cut that out of the black glitter because it was another way, a great place to pull in the black glitter. So again, when you go to trace it out, if you want your black cat to look like that, for example, then you need to flip it when you trace it out of the back side of the black glitter. Okay. I'm gonna lay that out. And I think that tiny border there just adds a little bit more pattern into it. So, and then the other pieces are from the principal. You kind of trace around those legs and detach it. What size is the second photo over here on the second page, Beth? This is a three and a half by four and a half that I have tucked into the tiny border with cheerful 1B right there. The cat with the legs, I would definitely recommend on this more detailed designer template to kind of slow down the cut, but just kind of glide it through, of course, with your left hand. It's this design, I think you can kind of follow that cut through. So just quick short cuts. Well, in this case, slow short cuts. And you just kind of guide that through. I mean, a good thing, especially with it being on the back pattern here, like, I mean, I usually have pencil showing. I was about to say the good thing is my pencil won't show, but I usually do have pencil show usually. And, and it just kind of attests again to the inking step. Um, the benefits of the inking step for me. Do, are, do, are any of you guys superstitious with a black cat? Little black cat. Super cute. It's my little black cat. I really definitely had ink or glitter floating around here. <clears throat> And then yeah, so using your scraps of paper, go ahead and cut out another little border. Um, you can include a little principal. Um, how many of you guys have used the sewing thread in your paper crafting? I saw this idea, it was actually Nanette in the community and instantly I was like, it was a few, it was a while ago, but it just instantly, I was, I went to my sewing supply and I pulled out all my sewing supplies, which are put away until I need them, right? Until I'm sewing something. And I went and put them on the shelf in my scrap scrapbooking supplies because I was like, uh, double use. I will use them in sewing and I will use them in my paper crafting as well. So I'll show that here, just kind of give you a look of what that looks like. Basically, so you'll see, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just a little bit behind and it just kind of adds a little texture. Um, I did that also here. I combined some black with some orange, just like simple little touches like that. Um, 
in those cases. And we also use it here to kind of pin down the, or the bats together. I don't think we, I don't think we use it anywhere else. Oh, and then just a little bit behind here, just again, for a little bit of that texture. So let me, um, usually it's tucking behind something. So in this case, it's tucking behind this. You can have it tucked behind a little flower if you were doing something with flowers. So right, it's tucked behind the circle. And so all you're gonna do is you just take some of your thread and wind it up in your hand, like two, two of your fingers and just wind it up as much as you want. So if you want it to be really, you know, um, thick and stand out, you could do a little bit more and you cut that off and then you pull it off your fingers. And then at that point, you just kind of spread it out, kind of make a mess out of it. And then say like in this case, I would put a glue dot underneath that. And then I would bunch the center of this down and I would push it into the glue dot and then I would stick my circle on top of it. So that's kind of, and that would be the same process for anything else. So you just, if you wanted a little bit of cluster, you would just, I would add a little bit of glue dot, stick that down, center it, kind of where that center of it is. And uh, then adhere another thing on top of it that keeps it secure even more in place. But yeah. Just bunch a lot of thread together and then put it down. <laughs> All right. mine out of this pumpkin pattern. I just realized I cut my cat the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, so just flip it. Just flip it so that it's like here and your photo's coming out the other side. I think it works either way. Or you can cut another cat out if you wanted to, but. As far as these photo corners, I just added those at more for decorative. Um, there's a photo corner in tiny highlights, but this one is just a photo corner punch that I just have in my tools. So I just want to point that out. Usually when I don't add pictures to something and I'm taking pictures, like in this case for the class, I just add a little decorative photo corner so it doesn't look so bland, but usually when I add my pictures, it really fills in the space and the overall story starts to come alive, right? So I popped up my cat. I think that's also a great place to use a little bit of pop-up. So. I'm always looking for little places to do a little pop-up. It's kind of an inexpensive place to add dimension. Um, 
you can use you can change it up if you want there's a couple different circle options we'll use the other two circles here on this back page but you could put sugar high there you could put again if you want to add a little bit of extra embellishments um, it just depends if you're adding this or not if you want to add ribbon then i recommend sticking something on top of it and it could even be a button or something if you want to just more do more of an elemental um, it's like an elemental filler it just kind of feels in the space but it's just decorative uh, accessories wise right <clears throat> so there we go then you can add something to it. Cut my circle out really fast. Is anyone on to the other page? I'll flip it just in case. So over here is the moon. We have haunted number four here. And then the little bats. Um, this is, you know, where you're going to do a little fussy cutting if you want to add them. They're in the printable and then I just um, add a little pop up and then uh, had the tie come down and then I just <clears throat> oh I'm sorry the string <clears throat> excuse me the string come down but I didn't tie that onto the bat I just placed the bat on top of the string coming down so I just wrapped it at the base of the moon and then added an extra piece that just went down and then added the bats And then on the pumpkin page, so same thing, we're going to cut two pumpkins. Um, in this case, you won't want to flip your template, right? So just like the, the cat, I'll just mention that. So hopefully it, you're like, oh, that's right. So you'll trace one on going this direction, but then you'll have to flip it so that you trace one going the other direction on that. And on this case, I didn't do with a face. If you want to add the face, again, going back and adding a little bit of those details, it's super cute and very Halloween-y. Okay. <clears throat> so if I'm going on to that page, my battery is about to die. Let me get my charger. We did this class a little bit later uh, just to kind of accommodate for some Pacific times as well. Um, yes, we're going to probably put a survey out just kind of we're playing around with different times and classes and trying to figure out what's, you know, I guess each day is a little bit different, but yeah, you guys will have to keep an eye out for that survey and let us know what you guys think. Whether it's like six, seven, eight, usually we go off the central time. Nothing past eight, <laughs> it won't happen. But, well, I guess central time, I guess the latest we do is seven, because that would be eight here on the Eastern time, because I'm in, I'm in Carolina. So, all right, moon. Actually, I feel like I'm the most creative at night. Is anyone else that way? It's 
like the house settles down and yeah. How come you didn't add like two or three in the morning? That's that's my uh, ultimate time. <laughs> that's the ultimate time. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's prime <laughs> when I can't sleep. So you just go down and get busy, huh? Yeah. Well, I live I'm in Texas, so we don't have we don't have down. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> oh, well, I guess there's some people in the metroplex that have down. I just go over. <laughs> Texas girl, I'm with you. Texas girl, she's with you. You guys need to hook it up. Next time you're up at 3 a.m., you can be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <sighs> Cindy, I am anxious to finish this adorable project, but I have to feed my hungry bro, so I need to sign up for now. Thank you so much for the fun class. You bet. And we'll make sure, Cindy, that you can, you'll get it to finish it up. Go eat. Bye, Cindy. Bye, Cindy. Do a classic yellow moon. You could do a full moon. You could twist this. I mean, I love the kind of crescent moon. It's really cute, but just another thought. If your string was more substantial, you could do little cat whiskers. Oh, that would be cute. But I guess you'd have to. You'd have to have like a wire or something, maybe. <laughs> yeah, or um, what is that? That uh, why am I spacing what it's called? Um, it's like that craft wire type thing where you bend it and you move. Yes, I don't know what it's called. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whatever it's called. <laughs> It'll come to me at three in the morning, and then I'll be I'll be posting about it. I figured it out, you guys. It's kind of a coded stuff. Uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you could curl it on the end to give him a little, you know, um, a uh, not so charming vibe. True. <laughs> Yeah. Love the ideas. They're super fun. Lots of fun ways to create with them for sure. You could put a little bow on his tail. On the cat? Yeah. A little bow. Or around his neck. Yeah, if you wanted to charm it up a little bit, make it a little bit more charming. You could also do a little, like, uh, I had to. Say it again. I had to put uh, bows on my trees the other day because uh, something was crooked and I, I couldn't take it off without messing it up. So I just slapped a piece of ribbon on it to make it look straight. And then I went ahead and added two little bows on the tree trunks. Um, to, you know, to tie it all in together. <laughs> yeah. Happy accident. Yeah. A lot of times that- You could also have a little hair raising on his back. Oh, cute. Exactly. See? That's super cute. I was thinking you can even do like little yellow eyes if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Add a little yellow to the eyes. Add a little bit of eye or googly eyes if you wanted to. Little mini googly eyes if you wanted to really- Oh, make it more playful. That would be super cute. More playful. A tiny Cheshire grin. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> very scary. Yes. Oh. Very scary. We have a great oh. cat, and she has like yellowy eyes. She's a great, she, her color is gray, but she has yellowy eyes, and sometimes. Like if I go down, you know, to get a drink or something, because they're wide awake at night, <laughs> just roaming the house, it seems like. But That's funny. Yeah. She'll be like on the back of the couch and I look over. It is creepy. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Oh, let me flip back. 
Yeah, and again, add a photo. This is a four and a half by five and a half photo. Um, if you want to tie something around the bottom of your moon. So the way I started it, just for reference here, is I just um, had a little excess of ribbon, right? That's gonna pull to the back. And then I'm just gonna wrap my moon a few times and then go to the back. And then I'm gonna tie that with the other end. So you're just gonna tie that in a knot, but don't, don't clip it off because you're then going to let that excess hang down. But go ahead and tie those two ends together. Like so. Okay, but only clip the one side. So be very careful not to clip the other one. Otherwise you'll have to go back and add a piece that just kind of hangs. And then at that point, you just let that one hang down. And in this case, then at that, you can kind of stretch it out and clip it off the length that you want it to be. And then I just used some pop-up. I had a little pop-up on my moon. And then like I mentioned, you're gonna do a little bit of fussing cutting on those bats if you wanna add those bats. And then you just stretch that extra piece out and then just place those right on top of the string and it holds it down. So again, you might wanna add your photo if you're not personally working with your photos yet and then appear those pieces down. Um, but that's the overall way that I did that piece. Add a new little pumpkin shimmer. Kind of fun to see these side by side. Just again, same design, but different papers, and it sure changes that look. The moment you change that paper just a little bit, making each one kind of fun and different if you're using different papers, but it's kind of fun. I'm gonna trace one pumpkin to the right with face up. Oh, well, I'm gonna flip it in this case if I was doing the top, and then I'll flip it and do the back piece. Either way, trace one face up, flip it, trace one that way, and then between the two, you'll have your front and back to add to the top of those. Now, if you have a little bit of vanilla uh, of this showing through, you'll just trim it up a little bit, but they won't be precise. Um, even in this case, because again, it um, just more thought of the sturdiness, I, I think it helps. You don't even, you could probably even uh, eliminate that top piece. Anyways, I'll cut them out and show you guys when I get to that point. So you guys can keep working on what you got and then I'll kind of come back and circle around back around to it. Susan, cutting the cat, do we, does Kiwi Lane have a dog? We, do we have a dog? In the pets accessory set. Um, what, which one you cut out the pets accessory set. I don't, I'm trying to remember you caught me. Hold on. I'm going to go to the website really fast. The cat accessory set the pets P E T S pets. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sure I have it then. Okay. I'll have, I'll have to I know check there's my house and I know that there's, um, and I'm like, I'm not sure there was a physical dog now that you said that. Nope, there's a dog bone and a cat head. I think at one point we tried to do a cat, a dog head. It just wasn't working out, but we'll have to, we'll have to think of something for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause we, we don't want to be one-sided. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we but went all for babies. Oh, <laughs> I only, I only saw it that because 
my kids are trying to get me to, I, I guess they're trying to use that debate on me right now. They really want ah. to. And I'm like, no, we have a cat. And I'm like, but mom, we can't, we need a dog and a cat. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, see, I'm, I'm allergic to cats mm -hmm. and my dog is part poodle and they're not shedding. So I can, yeah. I can handle it. Yeah. I actually really love, I, I mean, I love dogs and cats and luckily I'm not allergic to either one. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah. My, my eyes would be swollen by noon. Yeah, that's how my sister-in-law is as well. Which kind of makes it hard when she comes over. She doesn't come over much. She doesn't live in the same state, but she did come over once and she was like, I need to go take some Benadryl really fast. <laughs> and like, oh, God. But, no. Well, it's nice that that even works because that doesn't work on me. It doesn't work on you. That, that would just put me to sleep. <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> no, my cats are potty trained. It's really great. It's kind of weird because we had cats growing up, but they, um, my daughter Madison uh, studied on how to train animals and just different things. So she trained the cats to go to the door and go outside. Really? Yeah. So they, they that's go wonderful. The like a dog, you know, like a dog will let you know that they need to go to the bathroom. Uh -huh. yeah. Our cats do that. And, and do they, do they let you know when they want to come in, they don't wander off? Uh -uh. They just scratch at the door like little doggies. <laughs> like they're very, wow. Even one of our cats literally pays fetch. <gasps> she will play. That's fetch. amazing. Yeah. So you know how I yeah, told even you my dog doesn't mm -hmm. play fetch. What your dog doesn't play fetch? <laughs> uh, oh no, 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 no. He's he's fourteen. It's like way too much effort. Yeah. <laughs> so I got I got so happy cutting. Remember how I told you guys to cut one both direction? Well, I now have I have one opposite direction. So now I got to cut another pumpkin out. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do what I just did. The thing that nope. I told you not to do. Um, or to pay attention to. I was just like, yeah, cutting another pumpkin out. Fun. That was my dad's favorite saying. Don't do as I do. Do as I say do. Don't say as I say do. <laughs> yeah, don't do as I do. Do as I say do. <laughs> like that was so helpful when I was 12 and 13. I'm sure it made you roll your eyes at 12 or 13. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Well, Back then, you just said yes, sir. <laughs> Did you hear us talking about you? Yeah. Where he says my cat goes outside to train himself, though. <laughs> That's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. Train himself. It's awesome. Age, it's okay. I'm trying to find my other bat. If you do, once you get two cut out, then yes, you're going to want to adhere one to the top and then adhere one to the back. And um, if they're as close as you want them, then they're pretty good. Like I have a little excess here that I'll just probably trim off kind of thing. But for the most part, I think it gives it a little bit of 3D too, if you have a little bit of those edges. I don't ink glitter paper. So in that case, I can't blend those edges together with the trick of inking. Because when I, I, I once tried to ink glitter paper and then my dauber just 
got glitter all up in it and it never, of course, went away because that's, that's how glitter is. So, but you'll just cut one from the front, you'll adhere it down. Let me actually put a little bit on that stem. And it will lay over the front and then you'll flip it. And then you'll also add one to the other side. Because I'm cutting the because I'm cutting the black, Susan, I'm I'm working on the other bat. So the bat's gonna be actually the same way as the pumpkin, right? One's gonna be backwards, one's gonna to be top. Yep. Okay. Mage, yep. it's okay. It's okay. And then as far as this other page goes, yeah, if um, you just add a boo, I just took another border. So the opposite border in this case, wrap into my strip. Cute. See if I can find it. So oh, there it is. So this was the uh, part that I detached from this. If you flip it over and maybe just trim it up a little bit, then that's the piece that I just used here um, from the opposite side here, right? So from that pattern paper. So um, you can just use that leftover piece, just a little bit of a trimming there. That's how I did that one. And then of course you can add your photo. The ghost is from the free principle here as well. The ghost from Tiny Seasons works great on that as well. It, yeah, it would, absolutely. Um, I wanted to stick to like the one set plus the a la carte for this class. So people didn't feel like they needed like four sets, you know, but absolutely if you have tiny seasons or even tiny holidays, if you have that one, I think that ghost would be really cute from the size proportion. Yep. That'd be cute. So even here, it could be a great uh, place and opportunity to, if you had some ribbon you wanted to tie up around the two because it is uh, the horizontal way, you could even do something like that. Um, I just saw this, this is washi tape. If you have washi tape, <laughs> I'm just mentioning things. If it sparks an idea, you're like, that's right. I do have something you could do. Washi tape down. I always like opportunities where I can use washi tape because I'm sure maybe like some of you <laughs> uh, when washi tape became like a big thing, right? I was like, oh, I love this one and I love this one and I bought them and then I was like, wait, now what am I gonna do with all this washi tape? <laughs> so I always enjoy when they can find opportunities to use it because now I don't buy it anymore, but initially I did because I was just like, oh, I love that one and I love that one. <laughs> But yeah, just maybe a little bit more too. That could be cute. If I can get this on straight. Okay, so then the next page over, I'll actually just. is our tacky lantern. So if you want to cut the little face out, <clears throat> just use those as a stencil again, and then you would just cut those out and then layer them on top.
and put it there. I'm definitely going to have to have the um, video. Yeah. The, the follow up. Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking at the time and I'm like, okay, I, I might just like go through the pages just from a conceptual point. Um, and uh, just so that it's in the recording so that I'm not keeping you guys too late. But yes, Susan, I have that to, to look back on. Go ahead. Can you just go over the picture sizes for each page? You bet. Okay. Thanks. So the first page is four and a half by five and then three and a half by four and a half. Then say it again. I'm sorry. Four say it again. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm trying to write it down. So this one is four and a half by five. Okay. And this is three and a half by four and a half. Now I plan on these being like maps. So in this case, you could put like a three by four photo. But if you're just doing photos and no maps, anyways, I'll tell you the sizes and you can kind of just make that judgment call. Okay. Um, four and a half by five and a half. So a little bit wider on this one. Four and a half by four and a half. And then on the other side is a four and a half by four and a half again. And then a five and a half by four and a half. A four and a half by four and a half. Three and a half by four and a half. And then that's the same on the back of that. So another three and a half by four and a half. And then on this last page is two three and a half by four and a half. So two of them. Thank you. Yeah. So kind of when you get to that page, so just kind of running through these last pages. Let me know if you guys have any questions though. But I think I'll just kind of run through these last pages um, and then uh, make sure that, I'll try to get the team to send that out sooner than later. Or if any of you guys want to take screenshots, let yeah, me know. Yeah, I was gonna ask if you can do that. Yeah. Can you do that on a Zoom? Uh, yeah, what device are you on? An iPhone. Yeah, just do a screenshot. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Because if you're staying up till 3 a.m. finishing it, <laughs> then you at least have uh, the baseline to work from. So, um, exactly. <laughs> I can do that too. Exactly. All right. So here's the first page. Oh, oh stop. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. 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 Lori, the last page sizes were two, three and a half by four and a half. I just saw your comment. Um, okay, here is the second page. Well, I guess I didn't finish mine over here. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Still, oh, I did something. <laughs> I'm seeing everybody. <laughs> oh, you, might, you clicked on probably gallery. Go back to speaker view. Uh, go back to what? Um, you're on a phone. Go back to speaker. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. Go to speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see a thing called speaker view instead of gallery view? There's one. Oh, hi. Hold on. I'm going to dots. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, good. I'm good. So sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so here's the second. I've one. only done this twice and, and only for, 
cook for you, Susan. Oh, well, do you I do this? Forward, no time. You'll be good. <laughs> Susan. Yes. Before you uh, leave, can you show us how you hooked it all together? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so are you taking those screenshots for anyone that wants them? Are we good on the second page? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's that third page. There's the next page. Turn the bottom one also. Okay. I don't think I really finished my bottom one yet. I was going to add my photos of the girls and then I threw it. Okay. And then here's the next page, which I haven't done yet. We're about to do the bat. Other than that, like on this page, it's cutting out haunted five. Then, of course, using the stencils if you want to add a face. The boo is from the principal. The um, little candy, you can decorate the candy up. Um, I just added little twines at the end because I went with a very, you know, um, again, orange, black, and white traditional fill. But um, Shiloh actually, on one of her layouts, I don't know if you guys ever saw that crafting event, she actually used a little bit of. Uh, silicone and used silicone and wrapped it up around her as if it's like in a little package so if you if you want to do like a little silicone it was so cute I don't have any in my house but I might just go buy it just for that and again with the bat you're going to trace one with this direction and then flip it and trace another one out for the other side So go ahead, there's the other one for a screenshot. And I haven't finished that one. Now then um, as far as just cutting that little triangle or rectangle out, you know, just using your paper trimmer and cutting it out. And I just adhered that to the tab or if you have another little accent or saying that you prefer there instead, you could, if you have a stamp, it just shows a little bit. So having something on that tab, um, you know, adds to that waterfall effect here. So like that. Okay, so let me show you how to find them. And then again, if you guys have any questions, let me know before um, so I can answer them. If What's on the last page, the back of it? Oh, on the last page, uh, the it's just the cover. So you could add something if you want to this, but I just, I, I left it blank as the back of the book, basically. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as far as binding goes, um, you're gonna take some preferred ribbon or twine. In this case, I added about, oh, five, pieces of twine here. Let me see what size this is. <clears throat> Let's see if so around 17. So you probably want to cut it a little bit more, maybe about 19 so that you can tie it and cut off the excess. Um, somewhere around there would be do just fine to wrap around the book. So when you take your pages, so again, they lay on top of each other like this, we're gonna place them all within each other. And then you're gonna take your ribbon and you're gonna lay it down flat. So we're gonna wrap this, basically the middle of your ribbon. And you're gonna lay that down on the inside of those books and then you're gonna flip it and then tie it here on the outside binding. And then you can have, you know, that towards the middle or you can have it towards the bottom of your thing. So wherever you want that to kind of be. Let me see if I can get that tight again. 
that's why I said, you know, having excess and then trimming it off because, <clears throat> and it's hard to kind of get those loops into each other. So that's why I recommend about probably 19. I would cut your, your ribbon to about 19 inches. That way it's a little bit easier to bind it together. And then that just holds that, holds it together like that. And so, and then of course, as you flip through the pages, oh, this whole thing too tight. There we go. You just flip through this. Okay, any questions? So you could definitely add more pages if you want. Um, just depends on how thick you want it to be. But pretty inexpensive. And then once you kind of do your first one, it, it does definitely get a little faster, I think, um, depending on how much you embellish them up. But they do make fun little gifts too, I would say. They're just perfect little DIY albums for any occasion, whether that's like, you know, maybe an anniversary little album for your grandmother or granddaughter or whatever, super cute. So, okay, does anyone else have any questions before I leave you guys this evening? We all good? We're all in the zone? I think so. I think I'll go to sleep so. in a couple of hours. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. Susan. I want to see your book. Make sure to share with us. Uh, you Thanks, can... Susan. You guys back. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. You guys have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Bye. 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 Bye.